Okay. Perfect. Welcome to Vital Live on YouTube. Please go like and subscribe on this page so you guys get the notification when all these trainings come up. We have trainings come out every single week um, and try to just bring a lot of value to you guys, anybody that watches these, on things that are going on in the solar industry, how to level yourself up personally with sales, leadership, just in every way, shape possible. But myself and Tyler uh, have created a special series on this. It is a three-part series. Um, so make sure again to go like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Go like the Vital Tribe Instagram page. Um, and, and I wanna turn it over to Tyler and ask him why we're doing this. Yeah, wanna run through that. So, and I'm gonna keep reminding people, um, you know, I'm speaking to this camera because this is for those who joined us on Instagram. We're doing both. Once again, yeah, we're just keeping them <laughs> up and going just in case people stay here. But we're redirecting you to uh, YouTube Live. So go to YouTube. If you're on Instagram right now and listening to this, guys, you should be on the YouTube link. We've posted it in our stories. Uh, the reason we're on here today, you guys, is over the past year, there has been massive amounts of changes uh, to the solar industry, right? So we've had uh, financial changes from interest rates and dealer fees have massive, massive changes. Um, we've had utility markets like the recent changes in California. More saturation. Uh, yeah, and, and heavy saturation in different markets that have, that have uh, driven up the competition and, and you know, potentially put you in a position where you've got to be more competitive from a pricing standpoint. All of these changes, whether it's utility-based, financial-based, or competition-based, they all result in the exact same thing, which is how does that affect the value proposition of the customer? How does that affect what I charge them? Or how does that affect the savings they potentially get? Um, when it go, comes to comparing their solar payment to what their previous utility was. So we know a lot of you out there uh, grew up in savings markets. Maybe you sold a lot in California or maybe you're in markets where interest rates were lower. You know, now you've got to add an extra 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks a month to a fee and you just haven't gotten comfortable, you know, feeling super confident in that and, and the change to that value proposition. So today's goal and this three-part series that we're going to be running is going to be 100% to focus on all the different values you can set yourself up for in a solar cell and how to go through that line by line, A to Z steps in a home of what you may be missing, what value opportunities are you not spending enough time on, what questions are you missing to create more value and emotion from the customer? What more can you do to remove the fear of the unknown that a, a lot of customers have from just going solar because mm -hmm. it's a change, it's different? How can you build more trust in a home and ultimately, how can you build more urgency on top of all that to where not only do they feel enough value that they're excited to go solar, uh, but they're ready to move forward with you in that moment so you can uh, get started on a project that's not an overnight thing. So that is the purpose of this. Again, it's going to be a three-part series. All three of these series will be on YouTube Live. I see still we've got about 10 people on Instagram that are here. Guys, go ahead and click on the YouTube Live link. Love That's where support, you should be seeing us. But go to YouTube. We appreciate it. And it was my mistake. I posted uh, that it would be on IG. So YouTube Live is the link. Leave us here. Go click on that. Um, so three-part series, you guys. Part one, we are going to focus everything today on this part one series will be about the door approach. It will be about how important it is that you set yourself up in the first contact that you have with the customer, whether you are knocking your own door or whether you're a setter for someone else, to ensure that you've set themselves up properly, the expectations are set um, of how important it is to say the right thing on the door. So I'm gonna turn it over to Spence to help uh, everyone here understand a little bit more about why we're focusing on the door approach, what we've done here specifically at Vital um, to set ourselves up for success, specifically with how we operate, um, you know, our, our presentation on the door, so. Yeah, so like Tyler said, this is a three-part series, starting out with the door approach, then going into the first part of the close, the second part of the close, all building value through every step of the way. When we talk about the door approach, it's, it's such an important part of it because it should be an extension or uh, the pre part of your close, right? It, should be, it shouldn't be a bait and switch is what we usually see in a lot of times in the industry where someone comes up, promises X, Y, and Z, it's, it's a green energy project or a net metering or this, and, and then the customer gets bait and switched and it creates a really, really hard time to build that same value or continue on the same track that you were on on the door and then continue that in the house. So over the course of this entire organization for years and years and years, we have garnered and created this, this pitch and this close to be as duplicatable, as simple as possible 
and build as much value as possible to be able to be used in any market. So whether it's a super saturated market with no savings, whether it's a savings market, whether it's a market that isn't saturated, but there's kind of fear in the market to where someone, they haven't really heard of solar. There's a lot of people, they don't wanna feel like the guinea pig. Um, and they wanna make, want make sure that they feel like this is a good decision. I feel the value in this. Everybody's kind of looking at this and it's, it's just not a big deal, right? Everybody pays this bill. This is an infinite bill that you pay, similar to your housing. Your power is a bill that comes out of your, your, your bank account every single month. So this pitch, every single word, every single sentence is put into the place that it's in for a reason, and we're gonna break that down for you guys. This pitch, every single person in Vital uses this pitch. It has garnered us thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of accounts. Um, over the you know tens of thousands of accounts over the time that we've been using it and everybody uses it because it is very very duplicatable there's a lot of different pitches out here there's a lot of different pitches in the industry that people can use and we're not saying that ours is the only one to use neither of us are saying that what we're saying is that ours works really really well and the top performers in our company use it myself and Tyler use it because we, we made it and over time of training people over and over again about how can we make this better? How can we make this more simple? How can we make this more efficient? It's gotten it to this point to where Vital now sells in 10 days what, what the industry average is in 30. And I think that this is a big part because it sets you up for what you're about to go do in the house. 100%. So, something I would add to this, you guys, too, is... For many of you on here, you know, a lot of you guys do work for Vital, right? So you've come in with the expectation that you had to memorize this pitch just to give you your, your basic foundation of, of how to go out and set appointments. Um, and oftentimes, I think that's, that's an experience people have when they join somewhere, they do something they're told. They may not fully understand why they're doing something, you know, and, and what we really want to put a ton of emphasis on today is the level of depth, detail, psychology, thought, and purpose that went into creating this. Because as Spence said, like, it, it, you guys, your, your, your clothes, a close in a home, it is just an extension of what should have already been set on the door. It's just taking the value points that already got the customer interested enough to invite you into their home and expanding on those. And something else that he, that he said that I want to hit on, you guys, that I, I, I cannot drive home enough when he talks about bait and switch. May, many of you may not think that this applies to you because you're not, you're not intentionally baiting and switching a customer. You're not trying to lie to them and say one thing and then have them experience something different. But far too often, I'm telling you, it's happening. And it's not happening on purpose. What's happening is you want to get an appointment so bad and you misunderstand what is the most valuable to the customer. And so you, you say something about you might get some savings or, or you appeal to them that they're going to save money and your focus is on the fact that you can put them in a better financial position and it's all about savings. And by doing that, you set an expectation with a customer that they're meeting with you in hopes that they see this, this certain type of savings idea that they've now got into their head. So when a rep now goes in the home or when you yourself return to the home and then you show them a payment that's maybe the same or a little bit more, they now feel like they just got bait and switched because they were expecting a savings because it wasn't clear to them what you really were planning on showing up with, right? So our entire focus of this door approach, you guys, in, in today's training is not to just help you understand, you know, all the depth of that, but also help you realize if you do it right, most closes are laydowns. You, you should have 70, 80 percent close rates because you're uh, like, imagine this is this is crazy for those of us who, who grew up selling different products door to door where we had to show up, close them in 30 minutes and get them all excited. We didn't have appointments. That never happened. It wasn't a thing. We didn't set appointments in return because we knew they wouldn't keep them. Your clothes right? started on the door. Yeah, like that. You, you opened and closed right then and then. You had to do it while the emotion was hot. The unbelievable best part about solar is you literally have people inviting you into their home. They want you there. They're interested in your product. And they set an appointment because what they're really saying to you is, well, if everything you just told me is true and it checks out, and you're not pulling the wool over my eyes and you, and, you, and you didn't exaggerate something. If you come back and you tell me what you told me is true and you show it to me in paper on writing, that sounds pretty good. I'd probably sign up for that. Why else would they invite you over? 
So you guys, your, your, your ability to make sure you are presenting the right thing on a doorstep, build the proper value around the things that are going to matter so that you can then create an extension and show that in writing to somebody and build more value and, and emotion and urgency around that. If you don't set yourself up out of the gate, you're already on your heels, you're playing makeup and you're gonna end up with a situation where you're like, I don't know, I need to think about it versus, oh, that's exactly what I expected you to tell me because that's what you said on the door. That's what I liked about what you said and I invited you over and now you've proved it to me and now I trust you. So yeah, let's move forward. This is what you told me it would be. So that's our goal. That's why we're doing this today. So we wanna dive right in now, you guys. For those of you, um, there's only a few left, but you're, if you're on Instagram, please head back over to YouTube. Exactly if you're now. on YouTube right now, yeah, I'm gonna exit out of this in just a minute. We're just gonna kill the Instagram feed. So you're not gonna to wanna to stay on here. Click the YouTube link. Um, for those of you on YouTube, you should see a live PDF um, of our actual lead generator script. This is the appointment setting script we literally ask everybody to memorize, not because we want them to sound like robots, but because we want them to have a base understanding of a door approach they can use, they can trust, that's, that's proven, not only to work, but it is honest. You can feel super good about it. You can be really bought into what you're doing out there um, and beliefs more important than anything. So I'm gonna let uh, Spence kick us off as we dive. We're literally gonna go line by line today through this typed up script that we've used to help you understand the psychology. And, and if for somebody out there says, well, I'm not gonna use that script, I have my own, fantastic. Pay attention to the bullet points and what we include in the whys though, and why we're hitting on those. And you've got to find a way to incorporate these into whatever approach you're going to use if it's not this one. So yeah, you kick to, this off, Spence. To, to kick this off and kind of say the same thing that Tyler said is like, th this, is, this is an extension of your clothes, right? Like Tyler said, is when, back when we used to sell other things, your clothes started on the door. So if, you, if you're a setter or if you're a closer, a lot of people, they get into the habit of just trying to get appointments. They want appointments, right? They're just trying to get an appointment, so they'll tell the customer whatever they need to hear in order to get that customer to agree to meet and get that appointment. A lot of times what happens is you start spewing stuff that's not quite true or it's fluffy or it's a little exaggerated, and what happens is you, your goal is for appointments and not closes. Your focus is off and it's not on the right thing. So if I'm focused on appointments, then I might fluff things up and exaggerate. And then when I get into the house and I have a bait and switch, I've now shot myself in the foot. Lost and I'm trust. Yeah, I've lost trust. I'm, I'm playing inside of a hole. I'm not playing on level ground. Or if I did the approach the right way, I'm not already ahead by the time I get into the house. I'm already lost. So the, the focus needs to be on setting appointments for deals. You're not trying to get appointments. You're trying to get these people to agree to lead to a deal not just to agree to an appointment. So when we talk about this, in, in our opinion, what we like about this the most, and what we've had the most success with, what I know and he knows that the top 1% of salesmen in, the, in, in any industry that they've had is not bait and switching, it's being upfront. Super genuine. It's being genuine and upfront, just being, like getting to the brass tacks. And if you're a customer, and I want you to kind of put yourself in the customer's shoes right here, is if a, a rep came and knocked on your door, and the first 30 seconds of his pitch, you're trying to figure out what he's saying, or you can tell that he's beating around the bush of what he's doing, what is your demeanor right now towards the rep? What's your energy like towards what's happening on your doorstep right now? You're already turned off. You already want nothing to do with it. Versus the rep coming up and saying, hey, are you the homeowner? I'll be super quick with you. I'm Spencer, I'm with Vital. Um, I don't know if you've seen the projects going around in here, or you've seen anybody in, uh, in the neighborhood at all. No, okay. I'll give you the super quick. Uh, I'll give you this qu super quick version. In the past, when you guys were talked to, the massive problem with solar is that you had to put ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars down. You couldn't move. There was liens on your house. And there was a bunch of different ugly options that you guys probably wanted nothing to do with, and most of your neighbors in here wanted nothing to do with. That, you probably heard that, right? So what we've done in this in this section is we've we've overcome the objections as much as possible before they arise. That's the number one thing that you can do with an objection is to overcome it before it comes up. So let's, let's, let's dive into that, right? The first part of this is when I go to a door and I say solar, what am I gonna hear? I can't move, it's too expensive. There's all these different ugly options. I've heard horror stories about 50 solar. 50 people have been by. 50 people have I'm been by. I'm not interested. 50 people have been by. And so there's this problem section to where you can add 
any objection that you are getting in a neighborhood into this section. So for instance, 50 people are coming by, right? I go, has anybody talked to you guys yet? No? Okay, well, I'll be super quick to you. I know you guys probably would talk to you by like 50 different people. Everybody in here has. When you guys were talked to, the problem with solar is that it didn't make any sense. You guys had to put 10, 20, $30,000 down. You couldn't move. There was liens on your house. And there was all these different ugly options. You've probably heard that, right? Probably why when you talk to these guys, it didn't make any sense. Correct? Because, because recognize, like, if I'm the customer in that situation, I, what can I possibly really say back to that? If it was done in that way, right? So, so many people in this industry, their entire goal on the door is to be elusive about what they're doing. They're trying to avoid the customer knowing that they're with solar because they know they're going to get shut down because the customer has been talked to by so many solar people. So they play this, this game that puts them into a hole immediately where the they just confuse the customer. They talk about random words maybe the customer's not familiar with or they talk about some other net metering energy. They, they do things <laughs> specifically to get the customer in a place where they're like, I don't understand who you are, why you're here, in hopes that it gives them enough time to say something that piques their interest by time they figure it out. But the customer's immediately confused. Where Spencer just dove into that, you guys, he immediately pointed out he was doing solar, but he did it in a way where the customer wasn't going to object. He started beating solar up right out of the gate. It didn't make sense. Here's all the reasons solar was a problem and why you probably never signed up and you probably had 50 people stop by to talk to you, right? A couple things I just want to mention and then we're going to dive back in and just keep rolling through this script so that you guys can see the way we've outlined it and why. But there's a couple key points that have to happen in a door approach if you're going to set yourself up properly. Number one, it is outside of savings and, and anything to do with savings, what are the value adds to the customer and how are you going to include them? So as we run through this, you guys are going to see, we're going to try to pull out what are the things I want them sold on? What are the things I want them to agree to, which is why they're having an appointment? Like what are the principles? Really think of it that way. What are the principles that are going to interest them that I can create more value on once I do get in their home to close them that I can briefly get them on the same page so they set an appointment? The second one is Spence already hit it, which is what are their biggest concerns and how can I get rid of them, avoid them, overcome them, make them feel more comfortable with them, help them see that our option is different, which is why they shouldn't have those concerns anymore. Um, so definitely we're hitting that right out of the gate already. One of the main concerns we're trying to remove, so we need to remove concern and fear of, of, of something that they're confused or un, that's unknown to them, build value on things that don't have to do with savings out of the gate. And then we want to give you guys a few one-liners and maybe some tips and tricks throughout this on what you should say in regards to savings to set yourself up, um, you know, so you're not mismanaging your expectations or, or bait and switching. So he goes right into the problems and why don't you discuss a little bit more? What, why are you specifically talking about the problems you are in that problem section? Like, Call out the things that we list yeah, so, and, what, and what is it we're overcoming. So the problem section, I, I just, obviously we, we made it, so we're biased towards it, but we're also biased towards it because it gets ridiculous production. And here's why. Like we said, you guys are going to have this be an extension of your clothes. Every single objection that you're about to get on the door, are they not the same objections and similar that you are going to get in the house? So if I can start overcoming these objections and bringing them out or overcoming them before they even arise, right out of the bat, right off the gate, I am setting myself up for success way more than I ever am for not being upfront and, not, uh, and doing a bait and switch. So the problem section, the reason why I love it so much is because there's so many different markets that you're gonna knock in. There's so many different objections that you're going to get. I, I'll give you an example, right? So what if I'm in a, what if I'm in a neighborhood and there's been a bunch of people that have been knocking in the neighborhood and they're super sketchy. Scammy, it comes off as scammy and sketchy, right? What am I gonna now do? I've gotten this seven times, Tyler. I've gotten it seven, eight, nine times in the past like 45, 50 minutes because it was just recently. Now what am I gonna do? Adapt, address it, talk about it immediately. Where am I gonna put it? I'm gonna put it in the problem section, right? So now I'm gonna be like, have you guys talked to any of the neighbors at all or seen anybody uh, in the projects going up? No, okay. So I'll be super quick with you. The reason, I know you guys have been talked to by 50 different people, everybody in here has. The problem that everyone in here had with solar is that it didn't make any sense. You had to put 10, 20, $30,000 down. So, you we, just, so we just addressed money. Yeah, so you couldn't move. Money's not gonna be an issue. You couldn't move. There was a lien on your house. 
a bunch of people in here have talked to a bunch of different like scammy companies, sketchy salesmen, and they just didn't feel right about it. That didn't probably make didn't make sense. It's probably why you didn't get it, right? Yeah, what am I so going to say? I'm, if, I'm going to agree, too. There's, I, I, I want to point out one thing, though, that is so key is Spence has now knocked out the fact that, yeah, he's doing solar, but it made no sense. That's why you never did it before. You've already talked to a ton of people. We know that. And he's just listed out every reason they probably didn't do it. But there's a key phrase. When he finishes saying, I know you've talked to everybody because everybody has. First, he just lumped them in and didn't make them feel special. Yeah, we know you've talked to 50 people. Yeah, everybody everybody in here has. has. We already know. You don't need to tell me. It's okay. <laughs> and we know why you didn't do it. And it was super smart, by the way, that you didn't because it wasn't a very good option before. Here's all the reasons why. And I'm guessing we already know all the reasons. So there's no way by saying, hey, it was super expensive. You had to live in your home forever. There's liens, a bunch of messy things. And at the end of the day, it just didn't make sense. I'm sure you would agree. And that's why you haven't gotten it, right? That question, I'm sure you would agree that's probably why you never got it. Am I right? That question, getting them to agree with you For right sure. there, it's is massive. everything. It sets up the rest of the door approach that we're going to go into where you can now identify what some of the values are, how you're different, separate yourself from everyone with the solutions you're going to provide. But now you've overcome the objections and you've got them to agree with you that it was, wasn't a good idea for them to go solar and that's why they didn't. If you can get them on that page... You're, you, you've now opened up the rest, so they're 100%. like, great, so why are you here? Yeah, and it's... And if solar's a bad idea, and I agree with you, what, what are you doing on my step then? Yeah, and getting that agreement is, is so important, right? It's getting the understanding that we're on the same page, right? Like, th there's, there's, through this entire script and this entire pitch, it's always going to be catered to your personality, and then there's the skeleton and the foundation that you kind of make your own. But getting that agreement... There's step one, and I say, does that make sense? You've heard that, right? And they say, yes. What they're doing is they're acknowledging, yes, everything that you just said makes sense to me. I am on the same page, and I go, perfect. We will go on to the next step. You're, you're, also, Here's, you're also validating them because they're the ones who chose not to yeah. do it, so you know they feel that way. For and sure. if you can get them to feel validated, like they made a good decision by not going solar before, yeah. like get, get them on that, that page. But getting them to agree and acknowledge of what you just said so now I'm on the problem section. They feel validated. They feel like they shouldn't have gotten solar, but now they're listening to me. Does that make sense? Do, do, you've heard that, right? Yes, that makes sense. Then you move on to section two, and then you finish section two, and you're like, does that make sense? You've heard that, correct? You understand? And they say yes. And you hold their hand through every single section, and you're like, does this make sense? We're, we're on the same page. This is registered with you, correct? And we're like, yes. So you imagine that you're taking this, this, this customer down a path, right? And every single time you ask them and get them to agree and make sure that it's understood and registered, you're then taking the step with them, right? And by the time you get to the end of the pitch, they're there with you because you've gone through every step and made sure that you're on the same page every step of the way. Versus if you do the opposite and you guys both start at the, at the beginning of the path, and you never clarify that they heard this part, or you never get them to say, I understand, or you don't know that they're on the same page, you can very easily find yourself at the end of the pitch, and they're still right here at the beginning because you did not get them to agree. You did not get them to make sure that you two are on the same page of every step that you just covered and walking them to the finish line. So I want to I make a point here. So we've just covered, you guys, if, you, if you're seeing it on our screen, you should be seeing, you know, an actual PDF copy of the typed up door approach that, that we use for every single state, for every new hire that we require that they memorize, pass off, train on consistently and, and, and understand, right? The first section we've just really covered in depth, you guys, is the problem. Super important section, again, because we've now just gone through, identified the biggest reasons that people have expressed their concern to either not want to listen to you or to not want to go solar, right? Either they've been talked to by so many people, they're concerned about the money, moving, they're not going to be around long enough. He's just knocked that out of the park, and now we've discussed how you get them to agree with why it wasn't a good decision. I want to jump into the next piece, which solution. is now the solution. Mm -hmm. This is where we're now going to really bring up what are the key value points. And we have the hook at the end. Yeah, and then we're going to talk about a hook, which is super key. But before we just mention all the value points and, and talk about the hook, um, there's one key piece here to me that I want to identify here that I want everybody to pay real attention to because I believe, truthfully, 
this will change everything pay, about your door approach. Pay attention. Like this part is key to me, and it 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 is such a it's such a, like a nonverbal moment, an opportunity to separate yourself from anyone they've talked to before, and to totally shift their mind from whatever they might have thought before to listening mode to hear why you are different. You guys, this is key. If you're in a market where people have come by before, you have to separate yourselves, not only from whoever has come by, but whatever preconceived notions they had about solar or whatever product you might be selling if you know, you're in a different sales industry. But the moment I cover all the problems, they now agree with me. They are thinking, yeah, great, we both agree solar is a bad decision. Why are you here? Mm. So I've got to now say, so look, obviously you already made that decision. We both agree it was a bad thing. I'm not here to try to convince you otherwise. The reason I'm here is we are introducing, I guess I am here to convince them otherwise, but the whole point I'm trying to make is we are here to introduce something completely different. That is my next line. The second they say, or, or, or I get them to agree by saying, I'm sure that's all the reasons you probably never went through with it as well, right? Does that make sense? Are we on the same page? And they say, yes, I get them to agree. I say, great, the reason I'm here is completely different. We are introducing something totally different than everything you've previously heard that changes everything you know about solar. That line to say, I get it, I agree with you, I validate your decision, it wasn't a good idea, I am here because we are introducing something completely different. Everything you knew about solar before, I agree with, we have something that is different, that is new. Like, it is such a defining moment in the approach when we agree and then I go, great, let's not talk about any of that anymore. We're gonna talk about something completely different. And then my first line after I say, we're going to talk about something totally different. We're introducing something totally new. I don't know if it will even work for you yet. This only works out for a few of the homes mm. that actually qualify. This is my first pullback. The moment pullback. I get them to agree and I've now told them, <clears throat> like, this didn't make sense. We are on the same page. I agree with you. Good job. I'm introducing something totally different. And I don't even know if this will work out for you. So I'll keep it pretty quick. If it does, we'll move to the next steps. I'll show you what that means and why so many people around here have asked us to. And if not, no big deal. I won't take any more of your time. Boom. And now I'm going to go into the solution. So Spence, why don't you walk us through now the solution? But I wanted to hit that transition. This is a transition point. You have to understand how to like emphasize. And I'm using my hands for sure. in this moment. I'm like, and I'm pointing like, this is the past. We both Here's use the our future. hands a lot. If you can't tell when we talk, we're very, we're very handsy talkers. But it's, it, it's, it's a perfect segue into the solution. The solution is, goes hand in hand with the problem, right? So I just got done talking about all of the concerns that they have, all of the issues with solar, and everything that they probably heard about solar. Or if I'm in a market and I have all these different objections, I'm now putting them into the problem section so that I can overcome objections first. What I have to make sure to do in the solution section is to overcome the objections that I just brought up in the problem section. By replacing I, them by with replacing something them with solutions, right? instead of a concern. Right, so you couldn't move. Now you can. $10,000, th uh, $30,000 down to get solar. Now there's zero money out of pocket, zero money down that you have to do to get solar, right? So I'm creating a solution for the problem that I just, that I just uh, brought up in the problem section. There's liens, there's no liens. Whatever a problem you brought up in the problem section, you have to make sure that you cover it in the solution section with the value prop and now the solution to whatever reason that they didn't get solar before. Because if you remember in the problem section, they just said, yes, Tyler, that's right. I didn't get solar because of these reasons. Here's the solution to these reasons. And if you, if you notice what Tyler said on, on doing the pullback, is that these people can get solar from anybody. You have to create exclusivity. There is a new program, but I don't know if you qualify yet. There is a new program, but not everybody qualifies for it yet. So I'm gonna tell you about it because we have exclusivity through this program. I always love to tell people that you can get solar from anybody. You have to qualify to get it through us. So the solution section, if you look at it, so we have a brand new program where the homeowner pays nothing up front there is zero money out of pocket. And sometimes, depending on the customer, I'll add another one in there where it's like, there's nothing down whatsoever. I wanna say it three different ways to make sure that they register it. If any of you guys have 
you know, kids, you guys have friends that just don't quite listen on the very first time you say it. You guys have to repeat stuff a lot to the customer in order for it to register for them. So I've overcome that right there, right? Yeah, I, I, I just want to add to that, like the, the how crucial that is. Listen, to repeat. You guys, customers understand the concerns. <laughs> yeah. It's their concerns. Yeah. Getting them to agree with it real quick, cool, you've at least stated it. We don't want to keep talking about the concerns. We want to, we want to get them out of the way, mm -hmm. mention them, and unless they bring them back up, we're not going to make no. that a big thing. However, what we do want to make a big thing, what we do want to repeat, what we do want to emphasize, what we do want to find a way to say the exact same thing three, well, yeah. four, Five times over, Maybe. not, even, not even joking. No. You need that to sink in. They don't hear it for the first time. And what you have to understand is you think they do because you're walking around saying the same thing to people all day long, morning to night. So you walk up, you spit an approach out, and you're like, they understood that. Why weren't they interested? No, they didn't. They didn't. You probably said each thing one time. They heard it for the first time. They they're probably still, got 30% of it. They're still trying to hear it, plus their ears still in their door listening to what they were doing before you got there. So to Spence's point, like... You know, I, I want to try to simplify this problem solution section, and this is definitely where we're spending most of our time because of how key it is. But when we call out the problem, there's, there's basically three problems and three solutions that we rope everything into. Number one is cost. We know people have a concern. They, they assume there's going to be some type of cost. So when he hits on that, it's no joke. And same thing, when I talk about it, I'm like, look, in the past it would be super expensive. If you guys were to qualify with this new one, there's no upfront cost. You're not going to have any investment. There's no money down. You're not going to end up spending anything or changing your budget. I literally just found five ways in a very short period of time to get the point across. You aren't spending any money. Yeah. And I'll still have people be like, yeah, I just don't know if the time's right it's financially. And you're like, oh, oh what? And that'll be after I do it five times. So if you're not hitting on it three, four, five times yeah. in not making it sound like you're a robot, robot because you say it in a different way, to make sure you emphasize that, you're missing. And then the next piece is, is moving, same thing. You guys, moving is probably the largest it's unsaid concern because really most people aren't living in their home for 20 years. They don't think they're gonna get an ROI if they move before then. And in the past, they've heard concerns about it from realtors, friends, family, something. You have got to start right out of the gate. When you say there's a solution and you start hitting on the no cost like he did, your next thing is, and the best part about it is it doesn't matter if you're here for six months, six years, or 20. This is a transferable moving plan. The, this is what's changing everything. This is what makes it so different is you can move anytime and it doesn't matter. We'll get more yeah. into that later. One of my favorite like, things to say on that. Five times about moving. Five times. One of my favorite things to say on that is that we don't care who lives here. We just want whoever lives here to have solar and be using it. That's it. We truly don't care who lives here. So then they don't feel tied to it. They don't feel like, they, like it's, it's their solar. It's kind of the house's solar, right? If they're currently in the house, then they're gonna be getting electricity from that solar. But they can move and sell whenever they want. We don't care who lives here. We just want whoever lives here to be getting their power from solar, right? Like moving is a massive, massive uh, objection that comes up. And or a lot like of times- Or it doesn't, they don't even say yeah, it. Yeah, but, but it's, it's like there. The but it's that's there. what I mean, it's that's the unsaid objection that is the number one thing it that is. people have issues because they don't think they're gonna get the value it's out It's the of it. commitment thing to it. It's like, right. oh, I wanna do this. I definitely wanna take power, uh, control of my electricity. I definitely wanna put money back in my pocket versus somebody else's pocket, or I, I at least wanna have transparency with my bill. I want to do this, but the commitment of it is, is big for me. And I might voice that to you or I might not voice that to you, but it's there. It's definitely there inside. And a lot of it is tied to moving. Can I just dip and move? And the answer is yes, you absolutely can. We sign people up left and right that they plan on staying there for a year. Right, capitalize on the tax credit, move out, sell with the home, wrap, the, the next house either just takes over the payment or wraps it into their mortgage and they don't think about it again. And whether they don't wrap it in the mortgage or not, again, they could just transfer over the payment now we got Ben sitting on the couch over here right now. You don't see Ben, but oh, yeah, Ben's, ben did. Ben's over here. Ben just bought a home with solar, and he knows the solar pricing. They definitely paid more than he would have, seeing the fact that he works in the solar industry. He didn't blink an eye. I didn't stop him from buying the home. He took over the payment, and they've already made several you know, years' worth of payments. Like It was already half, you know, not halfway, but a portion of it was already paid down by the previous homeowner. you got to believe that it's so simple. It's not going to stop people it's from not. buying a home. It is not. If I want a home and they tell me it's got solar, I'm already planning on paying a utility bill, and I don't know what the utility bill would have been there, so whatever you tell me my solar payment is, like, oh, okay, that's my yeah. utility payment. That's it. I don't know any cool. different because I've never lived in that home. It's, it's so easy. you got to believe in that. So, And as you're talking about moving as well, it's really important that, like, Tyler hit on this for a second is the, is the resale of your home. Guys, 
solar is no different than you having a pool. Solar is no different than you having a half acre lot versus an acre lot. There's people that want certain houses and there's people that don't. If you have a pool, there's going to be certain people that don't want a pool, but there's going to be some that do. More who do, and it's more, more than, valuable more than if you who do. do. But if you have solar, there's going to be some who might not. But there's going to be a bunch that do. You've now opened the door to an entire category of new people that want solar. On a lot of different home buying sites, you can actually filter it to buy solar now, like buy a house that has solar. It changes nothing. And the thing that we're talking about, too, is not just for you guys to for you guys to uh, give this information to the customer, it's for you yourself to believe this as well. Sales is a transfer of emotion, and you have to believe this and know this to be the case. Because if you actually believe it, you know it to be the case, and when you give this information to the customer, then they're going to believe you because it is true. So you yourself need to do research on this, you need to know it, and you need to have confidence in it. So when you talk to the customer, they feel that as well, and they feel that confidence, for every single solution that you are giving them, every single problem that you're overcoming, you have to have that and know that and believe it. Um, you know, and I, I wanted to talk about this and I actually skipped it over on this, but this, this pitch works in every, every single market, every single market. And we hear so much from some of our reps, other reps in other uh, companies and whatnot, that there's just, there's, there's so much saturation in markets, right? People have been talked to 50, 60 different times. I can tell you right now, with absolute certainty, 49 of those people did not pitch these people. They went up and said, hey, do you have a meter on the side of your house? May I check the meter out? I'm with the green project. And they're like, are you doing solar? And they're like, uh, I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe, uh, maybe. And they're like, get out of here. Get, get out of here. And they're like, okay. <laughs> that was what they got pitched with. That was that For was sure. 99, 98 percent of the people that they got pitched by. Yeah. So it's like, or the or the ones that they did listen to, made it all about savings. Then when they got in the home and weren't able to show them the type of savings sure. they created the expectation of, then they lost trust. Didn't feel like the deal was good. It, they weren't sold on value. For they, sure, it was all the wrong reasons. So then they just decided against it. Yeah. Then those are the people that are like, no, we've met with people. It just doesn't make sense. The numbers aren't good. No, they're not You're good. Like, no, you were never sold on the proper. You were principles. never shown the numbers. The numbers weren't yeah. great. You weren't built value. And so the, these people, and I want all of you guys listening to this, is that there is no market that is even close to being saturated enough to where it is actually going to affect production. It's not even close. There is no market in the country where it's actually going to affect your production. You, there, there, is a, there is a subconscious fear based in a lot of people where they've been talked to by 50 different people and so that they feel that this market is saturated. They feel that this market is too much, that it's too hard. They have not honestly probably been talked to or gotten this information one time. They have had nobody come up and say, hey, look, this is the deal with solar. It used to suck. Now it doesn't suck. Here's the reason it doesn't suck. Here's the value prop. Here is the solution. And I'm giving you the brass tacks because everybody else beat around the bush and bait and switched you. You have to believe that and know that, that you are different than everybody else. You guys give this pitch, you put in the repetitions, and you work hard. There is not one market in the country that is saturated to the point where it will even come close to affecting your production. 100%. So I want to dive back in um, just so we get, have time to, to, to get through this whole thing and then maybe open it up to a few questions. I know we've had to come through, so or had a few come through. Oh, so, I've got one, too. Um, yeah, if they've come through, we'll, we'll, we'll come back around to them in just a minute, you guys. So... Uh, again, we dove in and we're spending most of our time on this problem solution section because, again, this is how you reduce fear by overcoming objections, remove obstacles. I know I keep looking at my Instagram over here instead of up here, but um, this is how we reduce fear. This is how we build value in the differences between this. Yeah, we can just get out. If you're on Instagram, goodbye. goodbye. Go goodbye, over to everybody. YouTube. You're 45 minutes yeah. past the, the Never memo. Never again. <laughs> See you. Um, yeah, now I'll stop looking at it. Very good. So... Yeah, we've dove into these problems, removed some of the fear. We're talking about now the value and in, in, in the, in the proposition. And there's a, there's a third piece here. We talked heavily about the cost because I think that's the first barrier. Is it is. People just assume there's cost. We're still in such an early, even where we think it's saturated, those people that talked to 10 people still didn't. I have talked to so many people that are like, you're the 50th guy here. And then I'll still tell them there's no money up front. And they'll still tell me financially they're not in a place to do it. And I'm like, yeah, you... <laughs> You're if I'm already, the 10th guy, what did it. they say to you? What did you not listen to? And how are we not getting this? So 
We've now identified there's no upfront cost. We've, we've, we've talked about the fact that this is a movable plan. Doesn't matter how long you're gonna be here. That's the whole reason this is so different. It can go anytime, no big deal, super simple transfer. The last thing is now, okay, great. You, you've, got, you've got them to realize there's no cost. You, you, you've got them to realize there's no bill. Now we need to actually get into what you are explaining. What is this new program? How does, it, how does it work? What's the hook? What's the hook? And this is where we dive into more of, of uh, specific like pieces of what the value prop is, right? This is where I'm gonna say, cool, so I don't know if you're gonna qualify, like I said, this whole program is totally different than what's been done in the past, but if you do qualify, if your roof meets our requirements and our standards, here's how this would work. It's super simple. We would put the number of solar panels up on your home that we determine you need to take your power bill to zero. And it's really simple. We just then compare how much you paid every single month for electricity with your power company to how much you'll pay every month with electricity for solar. And just so you know, and this is where I, I knock out of the park the fact that they will not save money. This is it right here. Just so you know, all the neighbors around here that have been setting up appointments with me, it's not because we're trying to take your, your electricity payment today and come in way lower and save you a bunch of money. I'm not, I'm not gonna come over here and save a bunch of money for you, just so you know. The reason so many people are meeting with us is they just wanna see the difference between the two because the solar payment is guaranteed to never change. It doesn't go high in the summer and low in the winter. As inflation continues, we've obviously seen a lot of inflation over the past year or so. As inflation continues to rise and utility costs keep rising, your solar payment is guaranteed. So most of the neighbors around here just want to know if they can get their solar payment within like $50 of their electricity payment, even if it's a little bit more, the fact that it will never change, it's guaranteed for the, ne like the rest of their life to never, ever change. They know that is a no-brainer all day long if their house qualifies. It'd be like if we could lock gas prices in 10 years ago and have a guarantee that if we bought from one place, we'd never see a change in gas prices. We'd all do that all day long. That is why so many homes are having us meet with them. If your home qualifies and you can get put in that position, then it's, it's obviously a no-brainer. So again, don't know if that's gonna work out for you. And now I'm gonna move on and, I'm, and, and, and Spence will probably have a few things that he likes to say in there that are some additional value points. But I've just got them on the entire principle-based fact that I am not here to save them money. I'm not here to show them one bill that they currently have and give them a better one. I'm here because if we can even get them within a range of $50 a month, even if they're paying a little bit more, all of your neighbors know that's a no-brainer if they qualify for that because they're never subject to change. And it's so much easier to manage on their budget because it's the same price every month. There's no more up and down bullshit. They're sick of wondering what's going to happen to their bill and what it's going to be. Like, they never have to wonder again. Everyone just wants control. They just want control of a payment, and they want to be sure that it's never going to switch on them ever again. So, no. What are it, thoughts you have on that? No, 100%. Just, just to, like, echo that and piggyback off of that is this, this solution section is, is set up for you to get into the hook, which is then going to bring the emotion to the surface of the customer that you're talking to, right? So I just talked about why solar sucks. Now I'm gonna get into, we have a completely different program. I don't know if you're gonna qualify yet, but the way that this works is that the homeowner pays zero money out of pocket. There's no money up front. What we're gonna do, you guys can move and sell whenever you want. There's zero no lien, not zero investment. Your budget. There's no liens on the home. We'll care and what six we're months, gonna six do, years, however, we've hit it all. What we're gonna do is take your bill that you guys already pay. You guys have already seen your bill going up every single year. The bill you already pay and just replace it with a bill that has complete transparency that you have control over. Because you already know you don't have control over on this bill. It's the same reason why you bought your house versus renting a home. Every single one of your neighbors, you guys obviously pay your bill, right? And they're gonna be like, yeah, obviously, you're right. So it's another guinea pig meet with the, or, uh, keeping up with the Joneses effect. But you guys always pay your bill, right? And they go, yeah. They go, perfect. Everybody in here pays their bill. Everybody in here is just sick of what's been happening with their bill. They just wanna see the difference. They just wanna see what they pay now versus what they will pay with solar to where they can have control and transparency for as long as they live here. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna come by, show you pictures, answer questions, and then just break down what you pay now versus what you will pay with solar. The same way you would look at if I'm gonna rent this house versus buy this house, the value prop between those two. Does that make sense? And they're like, yeah, that makes sense. I go, perfect. So just you here, you and your spouse. And then you go into this, right? But this hook of where here's the problem with solar, 
here's a bill you already pay, here is a bill that goes up every single year, here is a bill that will come out of your account no matter what. And these people are homeowners, otherwise learn how to knock better because you're talking to a renter. But these people are homeowners, right? They bought versus renting. They have that mentality, it's the same thing. This is an infinite bill. They will pay this bill no matter what and they're already paying it. So if you get objections like it's too expensive, they need more information. You didn't explain it clearly enough. So when I get to this and I go, all we're gonna do, I wanna remove fear at this point in this solution. All we're gonna do, you guys obviously pay your bill, everybody in here pays their bill. They just wanna see the difference of what they pay now versus what they will pay with solar. Again, you, there is zero money up front, zero <coughs> money out of pocket. You guys can move and sell whenever you want. We don't care who lives in the home, we just want whoever lives here to get their power by solar. So all we're gonna do is show you the difference, compare them, show you some pictures, and come by and do that, okay? So when, when are you guys available? Is it nighttime or daytime best, right? So when I talk about this, I want you to put yourself in the customer's shoes, okay? Put yourself in the customer's shoes. I have a bill I'm paying no matter what. I have seen it gone up every single month or every single year at least. And a lot of the markets that you guys are knocking in, it's like significantly gone up. Significantly. So I'm already feeling like I don't have control of my bill and I know that I'm renting it. I know that it's at 100% interest. So when I talk about this and I tell them that all we're gonna do, there is no money out of pocket. There is zero money down. There is no initial investment whatsoever. All we're gonna do is take your bill that you have zero control over and replace it with a bill that you have complete control and transparency for as long as you live here. And I'm just gonna show you what the difference looks like. Oh, and also one day, me as a, it'll be gone. It'll be gone, but me as a customer, I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll take a look at that, right? And as I said that, I want you guys to honestly think about your reaction to that. Think about your reaction to that. Yeah, cool, I'll take a look at it. The way he presented it was just nonchalant, super simple. It's just a bill that I already paid. It's just swapping it for a bill that I can have control over, transparency over. If you notice, I didn't say savings. I didn't say you're gonna save $20 a month. I didn't say you're gonna save $50 a month. This is a pitch that I go in and sometimes people pay $50 more a month, $60 more a month, but yeah. they get it because it is different. It is so different, guys. It's the same thing as if you have an $1,100 rent payment, right? And it's 100% interest and it's going in the trash versus a $1,300 mortgage payment. If you have smart money, which one are you gonna pick? If you have smart money, which one are you gonna pick? A $1,300 mortgage payment or an $1,100 rent payment? And you, and you can already validate the customer with that because they already chose that. They already you know did. they chose that because they they're a homeowner. Did. So if you can validate them and help them see that the same principles they abided by when they bought their home and made that decision are the same principles they would once again be abiding by by making the decision to go solar, you guys, you're now appealing to, to, to what they've already done. You're validating a decision they've already made and helping them see that this is the same decision. You're removing the fear and going, would, would, you, would you go back on that? No, I'm glad I'm a homeowner. Yeah, you wouldn't change it because you know every payment is now going towards your principal and one day it's gonna be gone. It's just a smarter decision. We all know it, it's a no-brainer. It's not about if it's smarter, it's just about whether this will work for your house and if it's qualified or not. So can I don't I, wanna take any more time up, with you. Can I bring up one more Let's thing? Let's set an appointment and then we're gonna move on, yeah. One more key thing, and this is just in general. Do you notice how me and Tyler are talking right now? How we're just having a conversation, just like if Tyler was the homeowner or my friend, where I'm like, Tyler, you, you wouldn't do anything differently. You already bought your home. It's the same mentality that you have right now. Like if you notice the tonality that I have, the conversational flow that you have versus a pitchy flow and you're just going through the motions, it's a conversational flow to where I'm reasoning with Tyler. I'm, we're having a back and forth conversation. If you have a customer that you are doing 80% of the talking, 90% of the talking, you are not having a conversation, you're pitching them. For this sure. should be a back and forth conversation to where Tyler says, no, I get that. This is why this and this, and I go, oh yeah, 100%. It's the same reason why you did this and why you did that, right? So guys, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna try to summarize you know, a lot of what we've covered today to, to help really round off today's focus, the primary goals and the purpose of why we did this to really hope you guys got the proper takeaways. Uh, maybe give you just a simplified like run through again 
of what we would have done with this approach in, in a quick flow since we've gone so deep. Um, and then we'll take a couple quick questions. Ben, you can kind of let us know if there's been other, any other questions come through. I know it's, I've been texted a few, but I want to make sure we cover any, any of those. But this is the bottom line, you guys. Today was not to try to present to you the perfect door approach, right? We're using ours because we do believe in it for it a lot of good reason, and we know it works it's very well. So if you're here and, you, and you're like, well, I don't know if it, it just does, so take it and use it. Or if you've got one that you feel you're comfortable with, great. But the primary purpose of this was to really help you understand the principles that you have to get the customer to believe in, agree with you on, to set an appointment. Because if you do, you will walk into the appointment in a completely different situation, right? I want you to think back to that, that, that part where we're talking about the solution and I explained to the customer, hey, yeah, we're just gonna simply replace a solar payment with, uh, or your electricity payment today with an electricity payment that's a lot smarter than what you've been paying. We just generate it differently, right? And we're not here, remember this part, but we're not here to save you money. All the neighbors I've got appointments with, they didn't set an appointment with me because they think they're gonna save any money. Let me be super clear about that. They set an appointment because they know financially, if you can get a payment that's, even if it's 30, 40, $50 higher, if it's guaranteed to never change, and you know it's a payment you have to pay for the rest of your life, and one of them slowly goes up, even, you know, Spence pointed out, some of you guys might be knocking in markets where there has been significant changes to utilities. There's a lot of those out there. But also, I wanna go the opposite. There's a lot of that haven't had drastic nope. change. Maybe they're still 12, 11, 13 cents a kilowatt they're hour. They're still paying a bill. Guys, it doesn't matter. When I started off selling solar, <laughs> I was selling in a deregulated market where half the customers were paying eight and nine cents, and every home I set up paid 50 to $100 extra per month to go solar. They knew it, they weren't confused about it, that's what I told them on the door. So when I got in the home, and I want you to think about this, if you told a customer on the doorstep to expect to pay 20 to $50 more, and you got them to agree with the idea that that is way better, if they qualify, it's a no-brainer, and they, they think in their head, if I qualify for that, the way he explained it, it's a no-brainer for me to be willing to pay 30 to 50 bucks extra for a bill that's locked the same every month, no, no change, no money. inflation, no, no, no being thrown away. I am bought into the idea that a payment, even if it's a little bit more, is steady, consistent, goes into my pocket, adds equity to my home, can be moved and transferred anytime, no initial upfront cost. These are the value points and the principles that if they are bought into, when I go back to that home, unless they no show me, Unless they got busy and had to reschedule, mm. it's done. What am I doing? I'm just showing up. They already know. They know what they're getting. Like, <clears throat> so the but, reason why is because your pitch matched what you're about to show them. Correct. So, so the next two, uh, the next two trainings we're gonna do, you guys, are going to be a two-part series. The first part in the home of what we do to now go in, remind them of what we talked about on the door, dive deeper into some of the objections they may, may have, and cover them a little bit more thoroughly and build value on the things that they obviously liked that was hot buds that got them to agree to appointment. We're gonna go expand on those, and we're gonna really create simplicity and help them to get bought into the idea of why this is such a better decision. So that's what the next two parts are gonna be, is part one in the home, part two in the home, how we go about all of those things. But you have got to know, if you are walking into a home where you've set the expectation they know there's no money out of pocket, and you're going to prove that on paper. They know that they're going to pay up to 50 bucks more per month, potentially, and that's the expectation. How do I lose? How do I not go in, overcome simple objections with answers that all exist, build value around things that we know people care about, and then show them a payment that's, I probably walk in, and it might be a bill swap now. And if might I be. set the expectation that they were going to pay up to 50 bucks more, and they were like, okay, I'm down for that, show me, and then it's $20 higher? In their minds, it's 30 bucks cheaper than what I had originally potentially quoted. I've already set myself up for success. And the proposal and the numbers don't even matter. That's not even, it's like a blip. It's not. It's a blip <clears throat> in their house. Because they're different. Yeah. One is a utility bill and one is a solar. They are different. So many people set it up as though they want to compare. They're the same. It's not a comparison. It's just a comparison of dollars. Not. It yeah. is not. It is not a comparison of dollars. It really isn't. You are swapping a utility bill for a solar payment. It is a completely different bill. Yeah. The only thing that's the same is that there's electricity involved and that you have your electricity covered. 
it is completely different. So people don't go in and like set it up to sell solar. They sell a payment. And their stickiness is not it's nearly as good on the door. They don't have as good pull through. No, they missing, can't sell they can't sell at a high price or anything. Missing all the points. And and the problem is you guys, if this is you or if this is hitting home and you're like, oh yeah, you're right. I gotta change how That's I do good, things. That's good though. We want that. It's fine. Yeah, the whole purpose of this, you guys, listen. We want to set everybody up, and I don't care if you work for Vital. You know, I hope there's a few people on that just hopped on to join and, and, and learn. We love it. Yeah. We're all about abundance. Like, there's too many cool companies out here in such an incredible space with so much opportunity to go blow this industry up and have success in multiple places. I don't care where you work. Just be more well-rounded. Learn to sell on the right principles, because if you do, you could put me on an airplane right now, and I promise... I've never sold in, uh, we have markets in the Carolinas, but I've never personally sold a deal in Carolina. I promise you, if you drop me off on a plane today, I'm getting a deal. And it's not because I'm so good and I'm trying to pat myself on the back. I've learned the principles of how to sell on value versus what they already pay. And everyone pays an electricity payment. If you understand these differences, you can sell anywhere, anytime. It will not affect you. You won't At get all. in your head. You won't wonder if this market's the right market. To... If there is a door with a homeowner behind it paying an electricity payment, which is every house in America, unless their roof is DQ'd or something causes a DQ to, to not be qualified, credit. It's a deal. It should be a deal every time. So we hope this has all helped you guys maybe gain some perspective and understanding on the principles of setting yourself up for success before you ever get into a home by having the customer sold on the right things, the right value points for you to expand upon so you're not on your heels or digging yourself out of a hole by trying to show them you're actually not going to save anything versus them already having the right principles in mind. So uh, with that, I think we'll wrap today's training, but open it up to any, you know, if there's one or two or three questions, Ben filled those for us. Let us know what they are and we'll try to answer them real quick. And and uh, but we're gonna try to do our best since yeah, we're so we out got, of time. <clears throat> we're gonna give no more than a two minute answer. So how many yeah, questions so we got? Well, we've got one from Mr. Otto. The question is: Is do you guys personally? You guys both seem uh, to the point and professional. Do you guys personally build a lot of rapport at the beginning of your of your pitch? So I'll take this one unless you want it. Yeah, I think we can both do the same thing. My rapport is built, and his rapport is built yeah. since we follow the same pitch. It's built by being upfront, genuine, yeah. to the point, 100%. and saying the things that nobody else is saying. 100%. It's built by not beating around the bush and pretending to not be with solar. It's built by saying, hey, we know you've talked to 50 guys. We know it didn't make sense because of this reason, this reason, and this reason. We know you probably agree, which is why you never did that. Am I right? Yep. Just by doing that alone, they're like, I like this guy. He shoots me straight. He's being upfront. He's confident. I can tell he believes in what he's got. All right. I agree with you. Now I've got... 20 seconds I'm going to give you to tell me why you have something I should listen to. And then if you do a good job on these principles we just talked about, the rapport to me anyways, I'm not saying that if he's got some badass motorcycle outside and you like to ride bikes and there's an opportunity to connect on something genuinely, don't start bullshitting about their yard and telling them how pretty it is when they don't care about what you think about their yard. If there's a genuine connection to build rapport around something that is true to you, like it's a real thing, go for it. But most of it is all going to be built in the way you present yourself and by being different than the last person there. So anything else? What else we got? No, it's the exact, exact same thing that I was going to say is that people appreciate your upfrontness. They appreciate you getting to the point and they like it because every other person they've talked to just doesn't do it, which blows my mind. I don't understand how people just go in there and try and beat around the bush and just not just have a normal conversation. Um, so to answer your question, Otto is no. Um, that's how you build rapport. That's how you build respect. And for me, it's the exact same thing in the house. It's the exact same thing in the house. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm actually going to uh, pay attention to this one. This is just a favorite like one-liner of mine that is an example of how I think I build a lot of trust and rapport with somebody just by answering a question. One of my favorite questions is, this sounds too good to be true, so how do you guys even make money? How, like, how, how, do, how do you even do it? Mm. My response every time that I look them right in the face and I go, we're going to actually make a killing off of you. And I can look you in the eye and tell you that and not even feel bad. Do you want to know why? And every time they're going to go, yeah, like their face gets thrown off. They're like, yeah. I go, how many, guys, how many sales guys would you ever expect to look you in the eye and say, we're going to make a killing off of you? Well, let me show you why. And I pull my calculator out. And this either happens on the door or in the home. And I pull it out and I go, what's your average bill right now? 200 bucks a month? Cool. I take 200 and I go, if they never increase ever again for 25 years, 
over the next 25 years, you guys are going to pay this much money. And I show them and I go, that's how much money you're going to pay. That's not including like, you know, increases in cost. They are going to make a killing off of you. We just would prefer to make less of a killing off of you, but still do good. The money's just going to us instead, and we're putting you in a way better position because you're going to own it. So it's going to us and you instead of them, and they're just going to make a bigger killing. So you got to pay it either way. Would you rather pay to the one that's going to make a massive killing, they get all the upside, or would you rather pay it to the guys that are going to get less of a killing, and you end up with the upside? Which one's better? So answers like that where you just shoot them straight, and you're like, no, we're going to make a ton of money off of you, but then you back it up with some logic, it just shows them that you're straightforward, and that's just exa one example that popped into my head. Yeah. So. I love it. It's it's a great answer to a great question. Um, Want to get to one more question, uh, and you guys are going to run into this in multiple markets, but uh, Oscar asked, in Texas, I was running into people who have heard family and friends having two bills, electric bills, and, mm. and which doubled their payments before. I love that. It's a huge so one. Why don't you take that Yeah, one? so what, what happened in that situation? 99% of what happened in that situation uh, is that they were sold very, very wrong by someone who was not trying to do the right thing, right? They, they were sold at a high price, and they were sold at 50% coverage, right? They were sold at 50% coverage at a really high price because the person said that that was going to cover their entire bill. And I'm going to explain this to the customer because the customer needs to know what my goal is, is to have them achieve net zero. I want to have 100% coverage on their house, right? I want to have 100% coverage versus 50% coverage. So when this person or whoever they had that was sold, what probably happened is that they were using 20,000 kilowatt hours uh, a, a year and they got sold at a coverage for 10,000 kilowatt hours a year and then sold at a really high price, which is gonna give them a double bill. And what's gonna happen with you, and then you're gonna explain what net zero is, is where I'm gonna come in, we're gonna go over your bill together, we're gonna both look at exactly what you use every single year and then we're gonna design the system and put enough panels on the house to where we can offset that by 100%. And hopefully a little bit more than 100% so that we can have a cushion to where that never happens to you. One, or this person increased their usage significantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just, that's all I was gonna add is, is I'll just say to the customer there, everything Spence already said on the one side, I'll say, hey, that happens for one of two reasons. Totally understandable why somebody would be frustrated in that position. Totally understandable. Um, but it's either because the sales rep didn't set it up right, and then I'm gonna explain everything Spence did, or I'm gonna say, or they actually had a sales rep who did a really, really good job, but they might have misunderstood it. Oftentimes what happens is people think, I got solar now, I can do whatever the hell I want because the guy said it's gonna cover everything. Remember that everything is based on what you were previously using. So if we do design it perfectly and we nail it, it's still possible to get a second bill if you decide that you want to leave lights on from morning to night and turn the AC down to 50, like, then you're going to start using more than you previously were and this is what's going to happen. So just make sure they understand either it was a rep that did it wrong and I'm going to make sure we really dive into the numbers and that's an opportunity for you to build trust where somebody else might have done a bad job with their friend or your friend might have misunderstood and started using way more power and I'm going to help show you how to avoid that and, and, and you know, best practices. Totally. Okay, guys, that's all the questions that we're taking for this time. Super excited that we got over this part one. Um, notice that we, we covered the problem and the solution section for almost the entire time because that's where the objections are overcome. That's where the value is built. That's where the emotion is brought to the surface. And the rest of it is scheduling the time with the customer and just solidifying the appointment. So extremely happy that we're able to do this. Uh, I always love training with Tyler. Love training for you guys. Um, I hope that you guys got a bunch of uh, a bunch of value out of this. I hope that you guys in the comments that you guys can get your people on the next one, get your friends on the next one. If you're a manager, make sure to send out these invites. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Go to Vital's page and like and subscribe as well. And yeah, what else do you have, Ty? No, other than that, guys, appreciate everybody who decided to hop on. We'd love to get your feedback. This is obviously a three-part series, but this is also something we're talking about doing on a consistent, ongoing basis if we get the right type of feedback. And we may start making cuts and edits to really throw a lot of these you know, short clips 
of some of the answers to your questions and mm -hmm. you know little golden nuggets that we think might be helpful for uh, for everybody out there. So yeah, please give us your feedback if you would. We'd love to hear it, you guys. Um, again, if we get enough, this might be something that you start seeing every single week or even a couple of times a week. We uh, yeah, we want to we want to integrate and communicate and, and help provide value as much as we possibly can, especially during some some transitional changes to different markets um, as everybody's continuing to try to adapt to uh, the changes in the industry. So and it's fun. Yeah, we're beyond confident, it's you guys. It's also that, fun. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we've just we've been through enough change before. So much that we recognize change is hard, but it doesn't matter. It's Adaptable. it's a hundred percent up here, the mindset that it's not a big deal, and then gaining the right access to tools that are going to help you know how to do it. Um, so as long as you guys can bring the mindset, we're going to definitely help with mindset training ongoing with these. Uh, but more importantly, try to bring the competency uh, that you guys need to, to feel a little bit more confident in your sales skills. So hope that helps, guys. Signing off for the, for the first time. We'll see you guys next time. Till yeah. next time. Like and subscribe, please, guys. That way uh, you'll be here uh, live for next time and, and uh, yeah, already on the channel. And Vital's Instagram page, Vital Tribe. The Go end. follow it. That's Thanks, it. guys. See you guys.